Hi, so today I'm joined with Kazra Dash, and the topic is about semantic triples. So within semantic SEO, a common used term is a semantic triple. So, Kazra, what is a semantic triple? So a semantic triple consists of three components, a subject, predicate, and a object. And basically a subject refers to an entity or concept being described. You then also have a predicate, which expresses the relationship or attribute connecting to the subject um, and also to the object. You then also have got the object, which is the entity or value that is linked to the subject or predicate, which I definitely didn't read off of a laptop screen. So with regards to the semantic triple there, he's talking about subject, predicate and objects. So it's the sentence structure, but also it's very important on certain pages to make certain that you, you're starting the sentence with the correct subject and not starting it with the object. So trying to make sure you understand exactly how you should be writing um, semantically your content using semantic triples is very, very important. But Kazra, what is the purpose of semantic triples? So semantic triples is a way of describing information and it creates a structured machine readable framework for data to be processed in a cheaper way. The cost of information retrieval is key, especially when you're trying to rank in Google. Yeah, so I mean, this is probably one of the most important parts of why semantic triples are very, very important and they're going to stay with regards to SEO. They've actually been around for over a decade and people just don't realize this. But the semantic triples form part of the knowledge graph and this is, can help you with, with regards to like your knowledge panels and stuff like that. But the fact that they're able to use semantic triples and it helps their cost of information retrieval and brings that cost down from a business standpoint, of course, they're going to want to be using something like that within Semantic SEO. So why do some call it RDF triples? RDF triples comes from the resource description framework, which is the standard model used for representing relationships between data on the web. Both mean the same thing, but RDF triples focuses more on technical side of this. And semantic triples is how semantically you can uh, tie together all the relationships. Yeah. So with regards to the RDF, which is the resource description framework, like I said, that's the technical side of it all being done. The semantic triples is more about how the, con the context between words and entities can kind of the relationship between them. So it means the same thing within SEO, an RDF triple and a semantic triple, just one's techni technically talking about the structure and stuff. So what are the universal standards governing semantic triples? You've got some brilliant questions today. <laughs> the universal standard governing semantic triples primarily include RDF, resource description framework, standardized how the data is described and interlinked in the semantic web. OWL, web ontology language, defines how to use RDF to express ontologies, including classes, properties, and individuals. And then you've got SPARQL, and SPARQL protocol and RDF query language is used to retrieve and manipulate RDF data stored in triple stores. I'm not even going to expand on that because that was very technical and Kazra sounds like he knows what he's on about with these semantic triples. <laughs> so, does Google use semantic triples? If you go into Google Patents, then semantic triples is, get, uh, is currently part of 12,672 different results when you do like a control F across all the actual um, patents. The RDF technology is crucial for Google search as it enhances the precision and relevance of search results by understanding the relationship and the context of data. So you heard that right. Google, within Google patents, there's over 12 and a half thousand patents that they've gone and put forward that are all got semantic triples in there. So you can see the importance and how they're using it across their search engines and the algorithms. Um, we will have the link in the description as well, which that might change. That could be up to, I think at the start of the year, it was only 11,700 patents. Mm -hmm. And now it's all, it's like I said, 12,672 
different Google patents that Google have got that I've got semantic triples in. The link will be in the description, which will show you exactly what, what those patents are. So, is there any tips including to include semantic triples for SEO content? Using question answering frameworks on the headers and employing entity references and unstructured data can be an effective way to generate semantic triples. When you use questions in your H2s and answer, and answer them concisely so you've not actually got any fluffy content, with an answer that is usually written directly underneath with a semantically triple formatted way. Yeah, so basically what that's saying is if you quite get good and understanding semantically, you need to get the semantic triples in there. If you start using it, is your H2s and your H3s question-based H2s and H3s? So how old is James Dooley? You're naturally going to be answering that. James Dooley is 23 years old, or whatever age that I am. I always say I'm 23. <laughs> um, so with regards to that, you're going to naturally then in the answer, James Dooley is 23 years old. James Dooley is the subject, is, is the predicate, 23 years old is the age. That is a semantic triple. That is an SPO. So if you can start getting the questions in the H2s, naturally, you're going to start getting in the answers a lot of semantic triples, which is very important for higher rankings when you're writing SEO-related content. So how do semantic triples improve link building? If you can write content for guest posts using semantic triples, it gives the guest post a better chance of ranking, which we all know more traffic to your guest posts can obviously help impact your rankings as well. Um, and then the traffic you get from that ranked third party website, it all goes into like the NLP categorization. So for example, if we have a guest post and that guest post, the only thing on that title let's say is just talking about casinos but the actual content itself isn't actually in the correct nlp library google's going to be like well there's not that much relevancy there so again using semantic triples can definitely help with that yeah so when you start getting the semantic triples in let's say guest posts so if you're going using like a freelance writer or an in-house writer and they're writing the content for those third party websites if you can try to get the semantic triples in there in the guest posts that then with an NLP categorization puts it under the right categorization, which means it's a very, very relevant backlink. The semantic triples now we're starting to understand are very important for rankings. If you can rank your guest post and that can then start getting traffic, traffic and relevance are massive plays with regards to the like everything to do with backlinks and link building and stuff like that. So is semantic triples a fad? Or do you think, like, with regards to keyword density and the optimization, or do you think that semantic triples are here to stay? No, so it's it's definitely been around for, for a very long time. Um, it's only going to get more and more advanced. Obviously, you mentioned before that it had been mentioned 12,000 times, and it's only going to get more and more. Um, semantic triples can make it cheaper for Google to score, to score your content and also get around the web quicker. So again, if we're going back to like the, the ROI of Google, would they rather crawl a website that costs them £5 to crawl every single page, or would they rather crawl a website that takes them a lot less, let's say £1? Yeah. Um, so from that point of view, again, it, it, Google's just going to rely more on this technology as time goes on, and especially with the rise of AI content. Um, and also by structuring your information, subject, predicate, object, triples can become more easy and um, understandable for machines as well. So the machine-readable semantic triples in there, the subject, the predicate, and the object, it just makes it so much cheaper for them. They then factually can start seeing that if someone starts writing a piece of content about how old is James Dooley, it's a 2,000 word article, it only needs to be one sentence. Yep. So that semantic triple, all that they need to do is connect the subject and the object, and then that's it, done. That's the answer to that question. Can you start getting more for your brand or for your name, more semantic triples out there, more factual information that's connected in the right way, that's machine readable, which then can improve your knowledge panels personally, or even your knowledge panel for brands and mm -hmm. for companies. So can you give us some examples of semantic triples? We're having a bit of a play around here, aren't we? 
Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen a couple on the list. That I'm like, oh, that, that's a funny one. Uh, we will go with Craig Campbell is James Dooley's VA. Yeah, so that is an actual semantic triple. Craig Campbell is the subject, is, is the predicate. James Dooley's VA is the object. Now, is that true? <laughs> Craig Campbell is my virtual assistant, yeah. <laughs> right, well, what, what's, what's some that you, you want to get out? So other ones that are, are important, I'm going to name some of these here, which kind of touch upon then the importance of, let's say, EEAT with semantic triples. So trying to get, if you have won an award, right, James Dooley wins Best SEO Expert 2025, mm -hmm. right? That is a semantic triple. James Dooley being the subject, yep. wins being the predicate, the object being the, the award of Best SEO Expert 2025. That connects James Dooley, the entity of James Dooley, with an award. Right, okay. Right? So then a different way, instead of saying wins, James Dooley awarded number one, UK lead generation specialist. James Dooley is the subject. Awarded is the predicate. And then whatever the award is, in this case, number one UK lead generation specialist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Away from awards, you could then start to say James Dooley, which is not, this is not a true statement because we even though we are talking about semantic triples, James Dooley is a semantic triple expert. I'm going to hold you to that one. Um, but I like this one. James Dooley is better than Corey at semantic SEO. I'm going to hold that one. <laughs> I first learned anything to do with semantic triples from Corey's course, the Topical Authority course. At first, I thought it was overcomplicating certain terminology, but then when I started to dig deeper in what, what are semantic triples, what are RDF triples, can I not just add certain words on the page and it helped me to go up using certain keyword optimization tools. But when I started to understand the methodology behind semantic triples, then it became really, really important. Yeah, I mean, it, it does seem like it, it, there is a bit of a science to to just writing your content. Like a lot of people, even like you started doing SEO way longer than I did. But back that when you started, it was all about keyword density. Yeah. Um, and then it basically became like copycat content. So yeah. tr you're just trying to figure out, okay, these guys, they've got these headings, they've mentioned this keyword X amount of times, I need to do the same. And now it's, it's kind of... We're essentially on another level here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's gone from keyword density to TFIDF yep. to ent entity optimization to no semantic triples. I mean, entity optimization is still very important and it falls very, very closely related to semantic triples. But when you start to get the questions in the headers and then you're getting the direct answers underneath it, naturally you're working in those RDF triples or semantic triples. Yep for SEO, it just makes a huge difference. Yeah, and what, one thing as well to mention, just looking at some of the, some of the examples, like we've got James Dooley as an office cleaner, right? That, yeah. that's, a, that's another um, semantic triple. But in some cases, you might already accidentally be including semantic triples without just knowing it, because sometimes it's, it's just like good SEO. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you might just not be known that you're doing it. It's, it's kind of like if you accidentally get like a good link because you've, you've published an article, you're like, oh, Forbes linked to me. It's kind of like that in this case. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you are looking to get a knowledge panel, if there's not much information about you on the internet, and what I mean by not much information, you can have loads of articles, but if you don't have the semantic triple set up of like, James Dooley was born on the 7th of September, 1991. Right, so that date of birth connected through to the entity. James Dooley is an office cleaner. James Dooley was born in Salford. And he, the more and more information, the more confidence that Google has of who this person is, that's when then you can start to get the knowledge panel. But semantic triples form a big, big, big part of you getting those knowledge panels. But away from the knowledge panels, if you can get the semantic triples in the knowledge graph, what starts to happen is the knowledge graph is what feeds the LLMs, the large language models. And that's basically then these two side by side. If the knowledge graph is feeding the LLMs, the retrieval augmented generation then starts making life so much cheaper. They're not having to read every single word that's on the page. All that they needed to do is extract the knowledge graph and the information of what they have within the knowledge vault and that's where the semantic triples form part 
of a great SEO strategy. So I would strongly recommend anyone that doesn't know much about semantic triples to dig deeper into it. Obviously, I've been here speaking to Kazra about it here. We're definitely not the experts out there with regards to going into too much more detail on it. If you are looking to expand on it further, there's lots of information and guides on there, even within Google Patents and stuff like that. I strongly recommend looking, if you are going into 2025 for SEO, understanding what a semantic triple is.